Welcome to Time Capsule, where we analyze history to find lessons worth learning. Today we're going to talk about the history of Barbie. We're going to talk about the history of Barbie to discuss the lessons that we can learn from the commercial benefit of creating Barbie for the owners. And also how they modified Barbie throughout history to adapt to the times and the changes thereof. This shows the benefits of taking an idea and executing on it. First, we have to get through the history piece because this is what we talk about on this channel, history. The inspiration for Barbie came when Ruth Handler noticed that her daughter, Barbara, was playing with the paper dolls and imagining adult roles for them. She saw an opportunity to create three-dimensional adult dolls. Ruth Handler was on vacation when she saw the Build Lily doll. The Lily doll was a rare, was a rarity adult toy. Supposedly, Ruth Handler bought three of the dolls. In 1959, Barbie was introduced to the world at the American International Toy Fair in New York City. She was the first adult-bodied fashion doll targeted at children, as most dolls at the time were just for infants or toddlers. In the 1950s, the company that produced the Bill Lilly doll sued Mattel for patent infringement. In the 1960s, Barbie quickly, quickly gained popularity, and in 1961, her boyfriend, Ken, was introduced. Throughout that decade of the 1960s, Barbie underwent various changes in addition to her line, including new hairstyles, clothing, and accessories. She portrayed different careers and roles, reflecting the evolving approach aspirations of girls. Barbie's friend Midge was introduced in 1967. Mattel acquired the company that owned the rights to the Bill Lilly doll in the 1960s as well. In the 1970s, Barbie continued to expand her collection, introducing a diverse fashion style and themed play sets. This decade saw the release of the first African-American Barbie doll, Black Barbie, in 1967 as well as other ethnically diverse dolls in subsequent years. This doll was only dark in complexion and not in features because it was made with the same mold as the white Barbie dolls. Barbie's popularity skyrocketed in the 1980s, becoming a cultural icon of the decade. She represented the glitz and glamour associated with the era. In 1983, Barbie's best friend Midge was reintroduced followed by other friends and family members over the years. In the 1990s, Barbie continued to diversify her range, introducing dolls of different ethnicities and cultural backgrounds. In 1992, Mattel released Teen Talk Barbie, which generated controversy due to the program phrase that said, Math class is tough. Critics argued that it perpetuated negative stereotypes about girls' abilities in mathematics. In the 2000s, Barbie underwent Further transformations to reflect contemporary styles and interests. She embraced technology and popular culture, with dolls inspired by movies and celebrities and fashion designers. In the 2010s, in recent years, Barbie has continued to evolve and adapt to changing times. Mattel has expanded Barbie's careers, options, and emphasized inclusivity, launching dolls with disabilities, different body types, and various skin tones. Barbie has also been featured in new areas, such as coding, robotics, and STEM. Now that we've discussed a lot of the history of the Barbie doll, which is especially popular at the moment in terms of search terms because of the movie recently released, I'd like to add in a few different thoughts. I believe that more than one person at the time had the thought of making a Barbie doll. But the thing that really made the differentiator for Ruth was the fact that she went through and executed on that idea. I don't think a lot of people did that at the same time. And that's really the difference in the result that she got. There are other things, too, that has happened since that execution, though. Like the consistent, strong brand identity for Barbie and how they continue to produce a 
quote unquote Barbie doll over the long term since the 1960s or in the 50s. That's a long time. But they continue to make that main toy line, if you prefer, and make adaptations off the main line to adapt to consumer tastes and cultural norms as they shift it throughout different time periods. And I think that's important to know because if you have a particular product, and these are just my own personal observations and such. Don't take this as, oh yes, he's saying you should do this, or X, Y, or Z. But if you have a product and you produce it, let's say, and it's making you revenue, rather than scrapping that product and starting something new, you can add, add on to that product and perhaps increase the amount of money that you're making from that product. And one of the other things that they did well too that I didn't really mention over the years was consumer insight and research. Because the Mattel company went through and conducted targeted market research on what consumers wanted and they sought feedback. That's why they slowly adopted and changed the dolls over time. Those are the main things that I want to convey. Yes, Barbie has also introduced um, and adapted to social changes and sought to use digital marketing and other more modern methods of marketing, which has led the brand to continue to be popular even to today. But I just wanted to discuss the fact that it was so important to, once you have an idea, to actually execute on it and then follow through. I think that that's the problem with most people, including myself. I'm particularly bad at that. Is I have dozens of great ideas. I've had wonderful ideas over the past year, decade, that could have been fantastic businesses, businesses but I never followed through and executed on them. And then from there, it developed something meaningful. I think that, that the people that actually do have a half-baked idea, so to speak, and then have wonderful execution will get far, far, farther ahead than the people that have wonderful ideas like myself that don't do anything. Thank you.